the budget talks. Here we are, joined now by the fire chief, Jim Clack, who joins, of course, Fred Bielfeld, the commissioner of police. Budget. Have you cut? What have you cut so far? Well, Jamie, we've been cutting for two years. Uh, as soon as I arrived here two and a half years ago, uh, we started cutting, and we haven't stopped cutting. Fortunately, this year, uh, through some new revenue, we've been able to restore a little bit of those cuts. We've cut over $20 million in the past two years, uh, and we've got back just recently 7.6. So we're going in the right direction. I am very concerned, though, going forward. The economy doesn't seem to be getting better very fast, and the pressure that's on the budget is still there. It's going to be there next year, and so we're going to have to continue to be creative and continue to find ways to fund public safety, both police and fire. But safety is still the number one priority, as always. I think it should be. In, in a city like Baltimore, it's a big city, a lot of people. Uh, we need to maintain public safety, both in the crime side and firefighting side, EMS. Those are key uh, services that people expect. And Commissioner, what about, are we saved this year as far as the losing cops on the streets? Are we saved okay? Yeah, I, you know, we uh, staved off the, the mayor's package and her plan really did stave off where we are currently. But the, I think uh, Chief Clack raises a good point in that we've built, Jamie, over the last couple years, uh, a pretty modest um, staffing levels very incredibly modest uh, re-equipment and um, um, infrastructural support to our agencies. And that's going to come with a future cost down the road. And, you, you know, there's no, um, there's no uh, rescue coming anytime soon. And Do you so, two talk? Do you two talk? Do you go over this? All the time. All yeah. the time. Yes. And so, you know, we, you know, we have to balance. I mean, there are some federal funds that come through uh, Homeland Security funds, and we balance that against what does he need by way of new equipment? What do we need? need? You know, there's a big demand on technology, the cameras for one on my side, and, uh, you know, they constantly need repair or upgrade to their equipment. And so we have to balance that pool of resources against his needs and my needs and what the city's priorities are and so we've worked to be creative but again I mean people should bear in mind that these aren't exorbitant requests we're not building some some enormous uh, empire here we're maintaining frankly minimum levels to keep and address the city's safety concerns what can the public do I mean here we are we all don't want taxes we that's enough already but when it comes to public safety, what do we do? I mean, what, what can the public do? Well, we, I live in the city. The commissioner lives in the city. Mm -hmm. We pay taxes. We pay the income tax. We pay the property taxes. And certainly that's an issue. But, again, public safety is a core service. We have to figure out how to maintain a minimum level of public safety as the citizens of Baltimore. And uh, that's what we can do is just support the efforts of the police and fire department to maintain that level of service that we so desperately need in this city. We lose people uh, due to crime. We lose people due to fires every year. We're making progress. The commissioner's done a great job in the last three years of reducing those uh, high-level crimes. Uh, we've done a great job in reducing the number of fire deaths. Mm -hmm. We've had three fatal fires this year. That's a record low. Mm -hmm. uh, so even in these budget constraints, both the police and fire department have been able to make progress. We just don't want to lose the progress we've made. I want to get with the pension. You signed on as off, your whole family. They collected the pension from Baltimore City, and here you are, you know, and it, you know, when you become an officer, when you become a firefighter, you got that pension at the end. What's, what's going on through you right now for the men yeah. and women who are still fighting to I, save their pensions? Listen, I think that the, you, you touch on a very, very important issue to us because beyond fire trucks, beyond police cars, beyond camera systems for the, for the city. At the end of the day, it's firefighters driving those trucks and going mm -hmm. into burning buildings. It's police officers responding to 911 calls for service. And morale is critical. It is absolutely critical. It's something that he and I have to uh, must every single day pay a lot of attention to. And so you ask what people could do, you know, to help, you know, um, surely they can put up more smoke detectors and surely they can work and, and do COPs. But uh, the men and women who protect this city, they deserve 
an enormous amount of credit. And we'll run stories about Al Marcus's overtime. But daggone it, these guys, these men and women, every single day risk their lives for people they don't know and are willing to lay down their life to make the city safe. And I'm not saying we should be grateful and we should hold parades in their honor, but at minimum, we shouldn't be kicking them in the teeth as we go along. And I think that, um, you know, the city does... There are things that we should be doing um, to pay the proper attention to that and acknowledge that, that these guys are doing a damn good job every day. And Chief, what do you think about the pension, saving these pensions? Well, I sit on the pension board, and certainly I've seen uh, over the past couple of years the tremendous hits uh, the pension fund has taken, and I think the city's trying to address that. Uh, there's been decisions made in the past before the current leadership of the city was there that cost the pension funding. And uh, certainly we got to make sure the pension is there for everybody in the future. Uh, I really don't like it when we change the benefits for current members, and that's part of the solution. Uh, I think that we have to look at what we can provide for future hires. I think we need to protect retirees' pensions. We need to protect those folks that have already earned a pension because they've worked here for 20, 25, 30, 40 years. I have people that work for 40 years for this city. Uh, so certainly they've earned their pension. Um, it's a tough issue. It's an issue the mayor inherited. And uh, certainly they're doing their best to address it. But we do have to, as the commissioner said, take into account the morale factor and the factor that we're actually competing uh, for good cops, good firefighters, with our neighbors and with other jurisdictions. Right. Yeah. And if we don't keep that in mind, we run the risk of being the minor leagues for a lot of other departments that pluck our people. And uh, we certainly can't get into that situation. All right, Jim Clack, Fred Bielfeld, and two men who wear the uniform of the many that protect us here and keep doing it, will you? Keep Thanks. us safe in this city. Thank right? you very much. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. All right, have a great fourth. Thank safe you very much. All right. Thanks.